Hey everyone, it is Zach here, and I want to talk to you guys about this Harbor Freight trailer. As you guys know, if you've been following along, I bought this trailer in the middle of the summer, and right now we're kind of towards the end of the winter. So I've probably had this trailer for six months, and yeah, right around six months, because I got it shortly after I got this car, which by the way, I just gave this car a wash, man. I love this Ford Red. Anyways, so if you guys have been following along, I needed something because I sold my pickup truck. And I bought this little trailer because I put a hitch on the car and I needed to pull my kayak around, which it worked flawlessly for. Then wintertime came and I needed something to pull around my ice fishing gear, which it worked absolutely fantastic. Now, we've taken this trailer up deer hunting and back and yada yada so I'm guessing I have 1500 maybe 2000 miles on it maybe um, yeah probably around there and uh, I've had it long enough where I think I have a pretty good idea of how great this trailer is so I wanted to let you guys in on it so here's the deal a lot of people put down these Harbor Freight trailers I don't know why they're like oh my god they're the cheapest Chinese made garbage in the whole entire world well Unless you're going to shell out extremely expensive monies, uh, every trailer you buy probably is made from the same exact g garbage that this trailer is made from, okay? But let's break this down into a cost perspective. So we got the, uh, we're just going to break down. I bought this trailer for $289 before the tax, so let's see what it's worth. So we'll start from the front, work our way back. Coupler and chains, that's about $30. Couplers are 20, chains are probably 10. Uh, so that's $30. Then we're gonna move one step back. We got our two tires. Okay, those are probably $40 a piece. So that's 110. You got the axle and hubs, which is probably another $100. So that's $210. We got two leaf springs. Those are normally about $20 a piece, so $40. That's $250. Then we get to the back of it. You got a $30 LED uh, lights. So uh, what was that, $210, $240? And then you got the frame, whatever that's worth, okay? So we'll just say, we'll just round it up to $280. Now, pretty much if you were to spec this out, that's close to what you'd get. Um, if you're going to run around and go to Northern Tool, Harbor Freight, yada, yada, yada. Now what you also get is a completely ready-made trailer that all you have to do is bolt together. Now, oh, fenders too. Fenders are a pain to make. I've done it. It sucks. Um, but you got to think, all the holes are drilled. you got your little stake pockets. Everything's pre-figured out. So to put this thing together, probably two hours. And then you have to put the wood on it, but that's to a person's discretion on what they want to do. But regardless, it's all figured out. You don't have to break out your combo square, weld stuff up. It's bolted up and ready to go within half a day, okay? So when you break it down to the cost, it's actually a really good deal. Now, <clears throat> I got this small trailer because I wanted something that I could flip up and put in the garage. I have my larger 4x8 trailer, and it's a pig. It's really heavy. This trailer, 250 pounds. That's nothing, especially behind this little coupe sports car thing here. Not really. It's actually very, it's actually fast. But for what it is, it's slow. It's like 130 horsepower. But just for what it is, it's fast. But it pulls it behind here without, uh, without a care in the world. Now, that's awesome, right? You can, you can get... Uh, this thing maybe gets like 30 miles to the gallon. So you can get like really good gas mileage, go fishing, go hunting, go do whatever. Uh, and that's kind of my benefit. I think a lot of people buy big, huge trucks when they really don't need them. You can get away with a lot of stuff by just thinking small. Um, because when I had my truck, I broke it down probably 97% of the time. I drove it to and from work with nothing in the box. Nothing. And I pay and I pay dearly for it, right? Because you idle here, you idle there. I probably got nine miles per gallon. So I can do that with this car. And I drove three weeks on a tank of fuel, eight gallons of gas. Yeah, this thing is amazing.
compar- comparatively to that. Now, let's say uh, let's say you have other stuff going on, okay? Let's take the same trailer, remove your fishing stuff. Let's put three foot high sides on it and a lid, right? Nothing fancy. Use some of this green treated ply like what I got. Just make it two feet taller, box it in, put a lid on it. Now what could you do with it? Well, you could take it camping. You could put uh, um, your tent in there. You could put your chairs in there. You could put one of those little luggable loos in there, your cot in there, all sorts of stuff. All your cooking gear can all sit on top of there. Plus, when you're if you make it two feet tall, you got yourself a nice tabletop. Uh, or three feet tall, you could use it as a tabletop. Okay, let's say you're not in the camping. Let's say that you have dreams that you want to be a small business owner. Well, or take a step back. Let's say you want to go snow blow grandma's driveway. Snow blower fits in there. Okay, how about oh, summer comes? Let's, uh, let's uh, push mow grandma's yard. It fits in there. In fact, you could probably get a kind of small lawnmower on here, like a rider. Um, Or maybe, I think I see a picture of somebody that threw a four-wheeler on one of these. Uh, Weight-wise, it would hold it, as long as it's not a giant machine. Um, I just don't know length-wise if you could really get it on there. Maybe if you extended it forward just a little bit. Um, But I haven't tried that. But you could definitely get a snowblower on there. It's wide enough and everything. Um, Okay, so back to my thing. Let's say you want to be a small business owner. What are some common things people can do? You can be like a handyman. That's relatively easy. Go get your license, and you can do all sorts of stuff within uh, within the legal boundaries. But let's say um, you don't want to have a huge amount of overhead. Let's say you drive a paid-off 96 Corolla. Okay, well, this works out fantastic. Same idea. Put three-foot sides on it, even two-foot sides on it. Pretty much all my tools, I've completely, like done a bunch of junk in my house with and a bunch of small engine work which people always need as soon as people find out that you know how to work on motors you will have people asking you to do things all the time uh just last week my friend from work he's like hey i'm looking at a chainsaw can you uh you want to work on it It needs a little work sure right he didn't end up getting the chainsaw but regardless i've had uh what mopeds generator uh some dude wanted me to work on it. another snow blower, all sorts of stuff. So you could do small engine work. You could do, um, I just replaced a door in my house. You can do that. Um, you could do uh, all sorts of light construction work, right? You don't have a 40 foot extension ladder. You could throw a 10 footer on here, a 10 foot, uh, maybe extension ladder or, a um, just a regular ladder. And all these tools you see, this is like pretty much, pretty much all my tools. And uh, I could put these all in this trailer with the two or probably with two foot sides, but three foot sides would probably be better. I could put both boxes in there, all my extension cords, all these bags of tools, impact, all that. And I could do all sorts of work and have no overhead because I drive a paid off car and I have, I'm getting 30 miles to the gallon going anywhere I need to go. You know, I see a lot of times these large construction trucks, sometimes they're loaded, but a lot of times they just got the sticker on the door and they got a little um, husky toolbox in the back and that's what they work out of. And that's fantastic. Sometimes you do need a truck, but I would say you can put doors in the trailer. You can put lumber on this trailer. You can put pretty much anything on here. Um, If you put a box and then... um, Heck, put like a 2x4 up and a cross. You'd have like a little rack on top. And uh, you could do all sorts of stuff. You'd throw all your gear in there for uh, camping and throw a kayak on top or a canoe on top or whatever. So that is why I'm telling you guys the value of this trailer is definitely worth it. Uh, I want to sell my other trailer and actually get a 4x8 version of this trailer because I think it is just enough for what a person needs a lot of people bash these things but i tell you don't bash them until you try them i mean you get um good hardware what is this name brand tires where are those car yeah car carlisle i think is how you pronounce them and uh i know those are pretty name brand you can get those at menards anywhere you you need a trailer tire that's kind of like the brand that you're going to get so 
yeah, uh, that's kind of my plan. I've been looking around. I've, all, I've always wanted to own my own business. I just don't know what I want to do, something that I'll be passionate about. And I really feel like maybe a handyman type career is something that I might go after. And this, I think, would actually work perfect for that scenario. I can throw both toolboxes in there and, uh, <clears throat> and all of my tools, all my desires, right? And uh, my air compressor. I got my generator. I could put that in the trunk of the car, or I'm sure I could actually fit it in here also. And uh, I could go and I could do all sorts of things. You can do trim work. You can do, uh, well, anything. Anything you advertise, you can do. You can pretty much do it out of this trailer. If you if you need something bigger than this, maybe just don't take the job. <laughs> so that's what I'm getting at, guys. Um, this trailer, I think, was in a great bang for my buck. Those 4x8s are really good too. Uh, one thing I've done to this trailer is I actually put some wheels on it and then when I wasn't using it I tipped it up boop, and it, I can roll it around and I just put it against the wall. And then it takes, I think I measured, it's about three feet of space up against a wall. So maybe uh, you're at an apartment and you want to have you want to do these things, start your own business, you don't have a lot of room, maybe that's an option. Put that in your garage. Tip it up. You have all your space. You can have workbenches in your in your uh, storage unit or whatever, and you can have that against the wall, and you can go to work for people and do all sorts of things. So the options are endless, guys. Keep that in mind. Uh, anyways, that's really all I got. I just wanted to really push the fact that I think this trailer is fantastic. It's lightweight, durable. Uh, people bash the Chinese hubs, right? Every hub is from China. I guarantee it. And, uh, if it's not from China, it's like my Stanley handsaw, right? This bad boy, I bought it cause it said made in America. And then underneath that in tiny print with imported parts. Well, shoot, that just makes it just as good as any other China saw. But I just repacked these bearings. Um, I used a, they actually come with Greeks, grease zerks on the inside of the hub. And, uh, you use a needle greaser to get in there and uh, grease them up real good. They never get warm. I have yet to have an issue with it. I haven't put a million miles on it, but this trailer is so cheap that if that axle were to fail, like people say, just go and buy a whole new trailer and start over because by the time you priced out an axle for anything, it would probably, you'd probably put an axle under there, I guess, but it's up to your discretion. I mean, they're so cheap. Just throw it away and get a new one, but I put on plenty of miles on this thing, and I think as long as I keep packing fresh grease in it about once a year, once every other year, I'll be totally fine. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. I will talk to you later.